All right, what's up, guys? It's Miss Long, just here with your um, uh, little homework help. I found a really neat way that I can actually record my computer. So hi, do you see me moving my mouse? <laughs> so I was gonna help some of you guys with Monday homework. <clears throat> so I went ahead and um, pulled up two problems from the homework. I know there's been a couple of questions, so I wanted to go ahead and go through a couple examples so um, you can have this help at home. All right, so let's look at problem 1A. So I see right here, if I'm looking at this, that I have two fractions. So I know that they're probably gonna want me to compare them because we've already got one problem here. So let's go ahead and if you have your pencil, go ahead and let's shade in three fifths. Well, I know three is my part and five is my whole. So look, one, two, three, four, five. Five pieces are in the whole. That's why the denominator is a five. So I'm gonna shade in one, two, three of those to represent three fifths. Okay, so we have this other problem over here, this other piece of pie, um, and we're like, well, what do we do? There's two blank spaces on our homework. So we need to figure out our denominator. So we find out our denominator by how? Looking at the whole. How many pieces are in the whole of this fraction? We count them, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 is in the whole. So you should go ahead and put a 10 in your denominator. Okay? So what we're going to do now, what do we need to do? We're going to go ahead and find basically our unknown right here. So we're going to cross multiply. Alright, let me see how I'm going to do this. Um, I'm not sure if I can really circle that so we're gonna try I'm gonna try my best with my pen sorry if it's a little sloppy so cross multiply and we know that since they're equivalent do you see the equal sign right here since they're equivalent that means that when we cross multiply the other way we're gonna get this we should get the same answer okay so when we cross multiply 3 times 10 we get a what 10 20 30 and we also know that this way, since they're equivalent, is going to be equal. It's also going to equal 30. So what times 5 gives you a 30? Let's count by 5s. Put up your fingers as you count. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 6 times. So 6 times 5 gives us 30. So let me move the little loops here so you guys can see. But look at our new fraction that we got, 6 tenths. So let's go ahead and shade 6 tenths in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And as you can see, guys, these are equivalent fractions. So I want you to take a look. Some of you are not really seeing this, but look at the shape of this. You see the shape around? Sorry, that's a bad drawing. But look at the shape around of this one. What do you notice about these two shapes? <coughs> Well, not my little squiggle lines, but you see what I mean. They're both the same shape. It doesn't matter that there's only three pieces here and there are six pieces here. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that this one has more pieces. We see that they're taking up the same amount of the entire pie. So, do you see these? This little piece and this little piece is also the same. So, again, your answer should be three-fifths is equal to six-tenths. Okay? So let's go on and give you a little bit more time to complete 1B by yourself. So I want you to go ahead, get your pencil ready, and let's look at our problem. 14 over 16. So we know that 16 is our whole, so 14 is our part. So what do we need to shade up here? That's right, 14. Go ahead and shade in 14 pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. 14. That's what I got. 14. Um, my little thing turned black, but that's okay. Um, so let's go ahead. What is our next step? Well, we need to know part of our fraction, and the only way that we can find part of this fraction is to look at the hole on the bottom. So, how many parts are in this hole? In the entire pie, we see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pieces. 
So since we have eight pieces in our whole, we know our denominator should be eight. All right. So let's go ahead. We're going to do what? We need to cross multiply. So let's go ahead and cross around. And we know this side right here is going to cross around. We know that this product and this product will also be the same because they're equivalent fractions. That equal sign in there shows you they're equivalent. All right. So we got to do some multiplication, guys. 14 times 8. So I'm going to do this with another color um, and a skinnier pen. It's kind of a big problem. 14 times 8. Okay. 8 times 4 is 32. Drop my 2, carry my 3. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 3 more, 9, 10, 11. And then drop my 11 down here because there's nowhere else to take it. Alright, so now we need to go ahead, since we multiplied 14 times 8, get 112. We're going to go ahead and know that since these are equivalent fractions, that both ways we multiply should equal 112. So if 8 times 14 equals 112, we need to find out 16 times what gives us 112. So we um, can go ahead and do some different ways. We can, number one, multiply. We can just take some guesses like 16 times 2 and see if that's big enough and keep going. 16 times 3, 16 times 4. You can do that. Um, you can also do repeated addition of 16. So 16 plus 16 plus 16 until you get all the way up to 112. Um, in this case, I know, I'm going to take a guess. How about 16 times 6 first? This is going to be a good guess on my part. 6 times 6 is 36. Uh, 6 times 1 is 6 plus 3 more is a 9. Hmm, well, 96 is too small when you get to 112, so I'm going to do another 16 times 7. Let's see if that gives me my answer. 7 times 6 is 42. Drop my 2, carry my 4. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 4 more is 11. Hey, look, we have our answer. 16 times 7 gives us 112. So now we can go ahead and look at our second piece of pie and write our new fraction. So what's our new fraction that we got? We know that our whole is 8 and our part is 7, so our fraction is 7 eighths. So let's go ahead and shade that in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And if you notice, this piece of pie right here, see this one little empty piece right here that's not shaded? Well, the two pieces together is the same size as this one piece that's not shaded. It does not matter that there's, there's two pieces here and there's only one here. This is one big piece that's two small pieces, and together the two small pieces are the same or equivalent as the one big piece. All right, guys, so this has been your lesson on equivalent fractions and how to find that with visual fraction models.